you're worthy of all the glory and praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallowed be thy name. Come on, right now, let's hallow the name of Jesus. Worthy, God, you reign. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Worthy.
forever. God can make somebody sing. My God is awesome. God, we testify.
Call for the elders, they'll anoint with oil. Pray the prayer of faith. They'll be healed, and if they've committed any sins, they'll be forgiven. I understand that. There's a time for that. But the Bible said that he sent his word and healed all their sicknesses. Come on, my word has absolutely nothing to do with my hand. Now, the apostle Peter simply walked past them and his shadow just passed over them. Come on. If everything was normal, and I pray that it never gets back to normal. So if you've been praying for normalcy, I've been praying against you. I don't want things to go back to normal. Now that's saying a lot for me. Because I like routine. God was not a God of routine. He is a God of order. But when we get in routines, we lose our faith. We have faith in our routines. We have faith in our traditions. And Christ was anything but traditional. So I'm going to believe. I don't know what you have need of. Each every one of you here tonight. I don't know what you have need of, but God does. He said, make your request known unto God. Brother John, I couldn't heal a common head cold. Sister Ann, I can't do a thing in and of myself. But there's a spirit of Christ that dwells within me that also dwells within you. And where two or three are gathered together in his name, asking anything in my name, he said, I will do it. Now, we have to pray according to the will of the Lord. And I don't always know the will of God. Brother Kenny, I don't always know the will of God. But I do know it that he purchased our healing on the way to Calvary. So I know it is his purpose to heal. Unless there's a 
outside circumstance that he's going to receive glory from later on. The guy that was blind, Brother Lashley said, who sinned, this man or his parents? He said, oh, nobody. This man has been born blind so that out of this process, out of this situation, the glory of God can be revealed. Now it's time for us to start acting apostolic. Well, Pastor, it just don't feel the way it used to. Thank God. Thank God. Come on, it's time for us to be apostolic. It's time for us to allow the Holy Ghost to move whenever and wherever and however He pleases. So I want you to I want you to extend your hands and your faith towards your brothers and sisters up here, and we are going to pray the prayer of faith. But the lastly, I just want you to put your hands out towards these these brothers and sisters, and we are going to speak the word of faith, Lord God, by the power of Your blood, by the power of Your name and your spirit, Lord Jesus. Uh, I pray healing virtue come upon my brothers and sisters. I proclaim healing and miracles uh, to begin to happen. You said these signs uh, would follow them that believe in my name, God. We're doing this in your name. We're doing this according to your word. We're doing this believing you. Now, God, I ask that you begin to move in each one of these situations. Touch the body, heal the life, touch the mind, oh God. Give a miracle wherever, whenever, however it pleases you, God. But show yourself mighty. Show yourself mighty, oh God. Be glorified in our midst. You'll be magnified. You'll be glorified. And we will tell others of your glory. We will tell others of your miraculous touch. We will tell others of the spirit of life that touched us and will touch theirs in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He is awesome. My God is awesome. He's awesome. Oh, he is awesome. Come on. I just want you to thank God for what he's done. I want you to thank God for his power. I want you to thank God for his miracle. I want you to thank God for his touch. Hallelujah, awesome, my God, you are awesome. Pastor, I don't feel anything yet. Yeah, neither did the ten on their way back, the ten lepers on the way back. Oh, come on. But as they went, <laughs> as they went, and as one came back to magnify God, he made him whole. Come on, can we praise God? Could we worship him? The miracle worker. <laughs> Yes, God, my healer. Yes, God, my deliverer. Yes, God, my miracle worker. <laughs> he is awesome. Oh, awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me valley. Ah, hide me. Hide me from the rain. Ah. He heals me when I'm broken. He gives me faith. I praise your name, God. My God is awesome. He's the Savior of the whole world. The giver of salvation by his stripes. My God is awesome. Today I'm forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. Praise your holy name. My God is awesome. Come on, is he awesome? Hallelujah, you are awesome, Lord. Yes, God, you are awesome. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Yes, God, you are awesome.
Hallelujah. I don't know what you have need of, but you can receive it right there at your seat. Come on, the power of God is in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is loosed in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And He is awesome. He is unlimited. Oh my God, you are awesome. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like perhaps some people took me up on my challenge. I feel like some people been in the spirit of the Lord throughout the week. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are basking in that presence that you have fellowship throughout the week. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Keith, you feel this up there? <laughs> I would invite, I would like to invite you all to the platform, but it's universal across this auditorium. If you just lift up your spirit, if you just lift up your voice, if you just lift up your faith, hallelujah, God is awesome in this house. You are awesome. If you're empty in spirit, it's a good place to get filled up. Come on. If your emotions are ragged, this is a good place for God to speak peace to your world. If your situation is upside down, this is a good time for the master to step on board. Ah. Hallelujah. He is awesome. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Just want to make sure I wasn't interrupting them because the Holy Ghost interrupted me. Thank you, Brother Rushing, for being sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I feel something happened. I know something happened in the atmosphere, but I believe something happened in your lives. I I believe it. He's going to confirm His Word with signs, miracles, and wonders, and it's time we begin to see that happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's time for demonstration of our doctrine to begin to happen. It just don't feel right. It does to me. I've been in the flow for about two months now. Took me about a month to figure out what was going on. Then I realized, Brother Carter, God was trying to get me out of a building mentality and into the church mentality. I sucked my thumb and I was frustrated and aggravated because things wasn't working right. They wasn't looking right. They weren't acting right. And God said, they're acting perfect. He said, Jeffrey, they're acting perfect right along according to my plan. Now get your thumb out of your mouth. Quit fussing and fighting against it. And just ask me, where to from here, Lord? 
Oh, that was such a, that was such a relief. Because I thought it had to go back the way it was. And God said, I'm using this to get it out of the way that it was. I'm using this to get my church to go to a different place. It was okay where we were. It was good for a time. But folks, we are in the last days. And we weren't getting it done the way we were doing it. It's time for the church to get outside the four walls. It's time for the church to go to work. It's time for the church to go to the supermarket. It's time for the church to go to the gas station. It's time for the church to go wherever we go. Ah, yeah. I don't, I told my wife, I said, my God, you got a cough drop. I said, I ain't even preached once and my voice is gone this weekend. I preached to probably one of the most disheartening, ex, uh, outward appearances in Pekin last week. Just a few people from the peak and crowd. Folks, we're in, vac we're in vacation season. Do anybody know that? It's just us. Everybody take a deep breath. Relax. You may be seated. It's vacation season. And we're doing a staycation. Said nobody that's been in COVID-19. If anybody can get out of town, trust me, they're getting out of town. It doesn't, empty seats don't bother me. I know what God has in store for the church. Empty wine barrels didn't bother Jesus. Empty vessels didn't bother the widow in the Old Testament. They were simply opportunities. Are, are they, Brother Rushing, are they videoing this? So it's going to be on YouTube? I realize that certain people have certain difficulties. I'm just trying to stay six foot away from you, bro. I realize that certain people have certain difficulties, physical situations that keep them from the house of God. And I understand that. Do not mistake what I'm about to say but if your seat is empty because you decided to stay at home and watch it you're in violation to the scripture it says fail not the assembling of yourself and COVID-19 stay at home made us lazy and my God if I can watch it at home when it's when we're on quarantine, why can't I watch it at home during service? Because you're able to be in the house of God. Now, if you got to work, if you got situations, if you're sick, if you get, a, if you have a fever, they turn you away at the door. Go home and watch it. But if we're staying at home just because it's convenient, living for God has never been convenient. Revival has never been convenient. You know what? Going to heaven isn't going to be convenient either. So I'm just telling us, brothers and sisters, I didn't, Brother Lashley, I didn't like this. In fact, for the last few weeks, I've been saying I don't like it. I've changed my tune. As Mackenzie would say when she lied when she was a kid, I changed my mind. I, God has changed my mind. I love this. And if you're staying at home because it's convenient for you, that's fine. Somebody else is going to take your seat. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you, I feel in the Holy Ghost. I was talking to Brother Lashley about how we are going to contain revival. How we're going to facilitate. I don't want to contain it, Brother Duhon. Forgive, strike that from the record. How we're going to facilitate the revival that God's getting ready to send the church. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And here's why. The kingdom of God, Brother Mernick, can't afford us to sit this out and to wait it out. Look around you, brothers and sisters. This is the norm. For the next 
extended period of time. Listen, this is not what, oh my God, Pastor, are you serious? We can't have a move of God. The house is half empty. We have done proved we can have a move of God with a half empty house. And I'm believing that miracles happened in this house with a half empty house. Brother Kenny, how else are we going to have in, uh, people come in to the house of God? God put a guard on my mouth. As Brother Shelton would say, Lord, put a fence across, across my mouth, but keep the gate open. No. You don't want God to leave the gate open on my mouth. Because I have run the gamut of excitement, anger, frustration, faith, expectation, oppression, depression. I've run the gamut this week. My life has been a roller coaster, y'all. I've been laughing and crying at the same time. Anybody else been this way? Anybody else, you just felt the, the pull? It's just like chaos. Can't get a grip on it. That means God's at work in your life. That means God's stirring up the gift that's within you, and everything else that's in there is getting stirred up at the same time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. She's not here, so I'm going to tell on her. I could have pinched McKenzie's head off with these two fingers this week. I'm telling you. I love that little girl, but oh my God, she made me mad this week. Twice. Twice. Okay, you can, you can have a vote of confidence and just tell me to leave because I'm human. Well, let me tell you something. My third daughter's not. Take that any way you want. Sometimes she's full of the Holy Ghost. The other time she's full of something, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. I love her to death. I want to kill her sometimes. No, really. God is making us sensitive. We've got to be sensitive to the Spirit. Well, look, sweetheart, you can't compartmentalize sensitivity. If I'm be saying you, you've tried, it don't work. So here's the thing. Be sensitive to God. Give God your emotions first thing in the morning and let him dole them out through the day. I found out every time I blew up on Mackenzie, I hadn't blown up on God that day yet. My emotions got away from me because I hadn't given them to God. And they were just, it, were, it was a dam. I was keeping them back. But that little twerp knows how to just gouge a hole in the dike. That girl has a dipstick ministry that reaches from here to kingdom come. I'm, I'm not being mean to Mackenzie. She's mean enough for herself. I love that little girl. And God's using her to show me, hey, <laughs> you're a little low there, wasn't you? Whoops, what was that? It wasn't McKenzie. Oh, it was McKenzie. But it wasn't McKenzie. It was God using that little twerp to show this jerk where he was a little imperfect. Now, trust me, I fixed her. That's my responsibility. I had to come back at, last week. I had to come back and apologize. I was saying last week's message. I had to come back and say, Mackenzie, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I reacted wrong. But listen, we got to fix some stuff, kiddo. You are too old to act like this. <laughs> I, sometimes I think God looks at me and says, Jeffrey, you're too old to act like this. <laughs> we meant it this way too long. This is the new norm. 
for a while, okay? Quit looking for it to go back to the way that it was. It will not, I'll burn this. <laughs> I got to be careful what I say. I will not burn the church down, but I will not allow it to go back the way it was. Y'all thought that was funny, didn't you? As much as his, his and my methods don't jive, I'm about ready to pull a Chester right and say no more music until we can figure out what this thing's about. Brothers and sisters, the early church didn't have a mus- any music. They sang to themselves. They didn't have a church. Is this okay? I know it's Sunday night. But I'm talking about where we're going. we got to get back to a place of apostolic power and dominion. And this is how it happens. Everybody learn this beatitude. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. Here's why we're going through what we're going. God is trying to get you and I to a place where we can feel the power of God, the anointing of God, regardless of what our surroundings are. Because God's going to show out and show up, Brother Lashley, not in here. The vast majority of Christ's miracles happen as he went through life. Not in the temple. Now, he did do miracles in the temple. And Brother Taylor, I look for miracles to happen whenever we come together in the house of God. But listen, these signs shall follow them. Brother Lashley, they're going to follow us. I'm not going to have to go looking for it. They're going to chase me down. These signs shall follow them that believe. We ain't going to have to come to it. They're going to follow us out of here. They're going to follow you to work. They're going to follow you wherever you go. They're going to follow you to your small group. They're going to follow you to your book study. They're going to follow you when you go to talk to your neighbor. These signs are going to follow us. Now then, John Maxwell says that he that thinks he's leading when nobody's following simply out for a walk. Jeffrey's paraphrase If these signs aren't following me, then I'm not a believer. Or I'm not acting like one. So this is where God's getting the church. You know why we're not coming together like normal? Because God don't want us to act like what we normally acted like. If if somebody needed a healing... Sweetheart, we said, you got to come to church with us. That's not scriptural. That's not apostolic. But that's safe, isn't it? Pastor, you do it. Kind of like children of Israel. Moses, you go up on a mountain. Come on. It's not that the ministry, these signs shall follow the ministry. These signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? You a believer? then let's let these signs follow us. You know how that's going to happen? You and I are going to get in the Spirit each and every single day. Brother Ray, I walked away from your truck. I walked through my door. I shut the door behind me, and the Holy Ghost came on me. I didn't say hi, boo, bye, nothing to God. I shut the door. And Brother Staten, I was afraid you were upstairs wondering what in the world happened. Because the lights were still off, I shut the door, and the Holy Ghost came on me. And I said, oh, God, hallelujah. And I began to speak in tongues. What happened? He and I were talking about how the church is going to begin to uh, grow in this apostolic realm. And the whole, while we were standing there talking, chills were running up and down. My hair was trying to stand up on on my neck. And I couldn't wait to get into the house of God so Brother Ray wouldn't feel like I was goofy. I got in the door and shut the door and out of my spirit, yes, God. Woo, I can't wait. And the Holy Ghost, come come on, there ought to be an anticipation upon you. I can't wait for God to begin to do this. I can't wait for the apostolic to begin to happen. I can't wait to be able to walk in power and dominion. Now that's what we want. It's not going to be imparted to us. You have to exercise yourself in faith. 
You know how you exercise yourself in faith? And brothers and sisters, honest to goodness, I got six pages of notes up there. How it's going to begin to demonstrate itself? You remember my challenge? Sister Amber, where are you? You kind of picked that thing up, didn't you? I could feel it. I could feel you, 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 some, several of you picked it up. You know how I could tell? We couldn't shut you down when we started praying. I almost had Brother Lasher just, just let the music go. Just let's just see how long this will go. Let's see what will happen. You've been exercising yourself in the spirit all week. That's what God wants. He could care less how good we sing, how well you play. He could care less about our musical abilities. What he wants to know is what your apostolic power like. How deep is your anointing? How close are you to the master? How much of his spirit is flowing through your life? Now that doesn't happen Sunday and, and Wednesday or Saturday night. That happens when you and I get alone. How many of you notice it's hard to get there? I've been doing this forever, Brother Lashley, and every single time I go, I want to do anything but. I mean, good grief, I want to go eat a box of Lucky Charms. I'll do it. I'll pray when I. No, you won't. You'll get yourself, you'll get your carcass over there. You'll sit down in that chair. You'll lean back and you'll begin to talk to God the way you're supposed to talk to Him until He begins to talk to you. You go get some lucky charms later. <laughs> and Shelly will come home and say, Oh, no, you can't. It's a raisin bran without honey or sugar. This is the dimension that God's endeavoring to get us into. And this is why we're going through what we're going through. He is shaking up everything that is convenient for us. Shaking up our traditions. He's creating issues. There is nobody on the planet, save Jesus Christ, that I'd rather be with than that beautiful woman up there that's wasting away to nothing. And... Saturday, Fridays are our day. Monday got taken up. We have Brother Dave Wallace's funeral on Monday. So Monday was, it's our day. It's taken up. Fridays is our home Bible study day. When's yours? Oh, you do, do you? Um, that's the other norm. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Well, how do you make disciples if you don't teach them? I'll bring them to pastor and let him teach them. Uh, no, you don't. We're all on a different level. You know where they are. You got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Nod your head. Then you got something to give. Nod your head. Come on. Friday, Robert calls and says, I'm sorry, we can't, we can't do Bible study this week. I was sorry for that, but I got to spend the week with... Saturday, Friday with my wife. We get in the truck, and I love that guy. We, we rarely ever fuss. Rarely. I know you guys think that that's probably not true, but it's the truth. Tension was so high between her and I, and we couldn't figure it out, Brother Lashley. I said, I, I'm not angry at you. She said, well, I'm not angry at you either. I would go home and cry. I tried to do that the way you do it, but it just, I can't get your nasal twang in there. I said, this is our day together. What, what, what's going on? I don't know. I just feel like you're all stressed out and you're all. And all of a sudden I was like, yeah, you know what? You are right. I am stressed out. And here's why. It has absolutely nothing to do with you, so I'm sorry. And Brother Duhon, later on, I got to praying, and all that stress was coming from my reaction to things. Instead of, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, you're amazing, Jesus. You showed me. I'm trying in the flesh to do what needs to be done in the spirit, so I'm all stressed out about it. Whew, that was so relieving. 
So I just went to prayer. And I told God what a jerk McKenzie was. And I told God what deadbeat you were on Saturday and Sunday last week. And I told God how frustrated I was that the church was empty. And I told God all these things that I felt responsibility for. And he said, really? Who are you? What are you? Who made you judge? Who made you king? Who who caused you to worry about this stuff? Your job is to seek my face and allow me to flow through you. Now, whatever they do with it, that's up to them. I kissed Mackenzie before she took off for three days. Thank you, Jesus. And I come into the house of God tonight. I'm so so excited. I told my wife, I said, I can't wait to get in the auditorium. Why? Because we've got to stop leaning to our own understanding. Now this, I keep coming back. This is the new norm. And I know we keep... I can't, every time I say, say this, but last year I feel this. Uh, I don't like it. Deal with it, get over it, and get a life. It is the new norm. You look around you right now. There's, tw- there's twice as many people in this auditorium today than there is in your average United Pentecostal church. That's the UPC. I don't know what it is for other churches, but for the UPCI, this is more than twice the average. We can't have a move of God because Sister Grant's gone. Oh, yes, we can. We need you back. Don't, don't, don't you stay down there. But this is who we are and what we are. We dare not sit on the Holy Ghost because it doesn't fit our criteria of what church is supposed to look like. Okay? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm I'm really not. I'm just trying to get you to the... I believe God gave us today, Brother Duhon, in this service, what He expects out of us and, and what can happen if we'll come to the house of God with an expectation. Stay in the spirit. The reason I sent out my challenge was because if, you, if nothing else, it made you aware of how much you needed to be there and the difference that it makes. I didn't expect you to do it every day. I, I don't think I did it every day. I tried. Now, there wasn't a day went by that I didn't pray and I didn't read my Bible. But there was a couple days, I don't know, that I completely got into the spirit, Brother Lashley. There was a couple days I did it too late, like studying after the test, and I really messed up. But I noticed God starting to do some stuff, taking away some fears out of me that I've had. He started to take some, uh, some situations hadn't changed, Brother Lashley, but my attitude toward them is completely different. Things that I just said, God, would be this way and, until, uh, until you take me home or whatever because you, the situation can't change. And God said, you know what? You're absolutely right, but you can. If you'll stay in my presence, uh, you'll become more like me and less like you. And uh, things will change in your life. And it's, oh, my God, it's elevated my faith. Ah, it's so liberating. I don't have that drudgery anymore. I don't have that heaviness anymore. And I couldn't do it in myself because I tried and I tried and I tried. It didn't happen. Pastor, I thought you were better than that. Are you kidding me? I'm human. But something about staying in the presence of God. I pray through my situations and I say, okay, God, about this situation. I I don't know how you want me to pray. I've got in my notes how he wants us to pray. I say, God, I don't know how you, I don't know what to say. I could say some things, but I don't know that it's the right thing to pray. So I just want you to pray through me and do whatever you want to do through me. And God, you pray this out of me. And I begin to pray every day. I get lost in the spirit. Some days I'd weep. Some days I'd cry. Some days I'd shout. Some days it'd just be almost a monotone. I'm I'm a million miles away in my mind, but the Spirit is just speaking through me. And it just seems like every day, it just gets better and better and better. I promise you, before it's over with, it'll be a strength in my life. Pastor, how can that happen? I'm telling you, I don't care what it is. I wish I could share with you what it was. I can't. It's too personal. It affects too many people. 
But I'm telling you what, if God could, I'm 52 years old. I've been pastoring you, I think, for going on, what, 16 years. I've, I've lived with this in my spirit for decades. Not anger, just frustration, just hurt, just ha. A situation that i got to get around every time I pray, and it's constantly in my face. I can see over the top of it now, Brother Duhon. It ain't gone yet, but it's getting smaller and smaller, and he's getting greater and greater. I believe God's allowed this to happen in my life so I can, con- I can, I can comfort you where with the comfort I have been comforted. No, relax. It was not a sin. I don't know who I'm talking to. It was a hurt. It was an injustice. So, I'm going to heaven. My name's written in the Lamb's book of life. God uses me. (laughs) The eternal far outweighs this temporal stuff. Uh, Come on, these light afflictions. We look at them through the eyes of the flesh and they seem monumental. But if you can get in the spirit and get up above it, I'm telling you, it's so temporal. It's so small. I know it looks big because it's right here. But if you can back up and get on the wings of the spirit and get above it, God will begin to let you see beyond it. God will give you strength to go beyond it. And eventually you'll turn around and say, what mountain? What problem? What situation? I'm telling you, oh my God, I don't know how long I've been talking to you. But let me just say this. Be flexible. Get in the spirit. You hear me? These are amazing people. They love you. You get in the spirit till you can love it when they say no. Is that possible for a teenager? I was there, buddy. I I know. I dare not go there. But just trust me. The spirit, if you'll get in the spirit. I touched you. I got close enough. I'm sorry, brother, sister Duhon. I got a word from the Lord for you. If you will forget about the what and the why, God will take care of the how. And he'll elevate you. And God will heal some things that you've been wrestling with. Come on. You get your eyes off of what's going on. You get your eyes off of what you feel in your spirit. And you get your you get your eyes upon the master. You get lost in the spirit, and God is going to elevate you. God's going to raise you above everything that you're wrestling with, every situation that you feel is insurmountable. I'm telling you, you get in the spirit, son. Ha! You get in the spirit, son, and God's going to use you. God's going to make Himself great in your life, and you're not going to have to worry about those issues that you fight with and that you worry about, and that James so is surmountable in your eyes get lost in the spirit get lost in the spirit (laughs) don't worry about what they said don't worry about what it looks like Ah, come on you get lost in the spirit and listen to what the master says you get lost in the spirit and you begin to see what God sees on the inside of you you get lost in the spirit and allow God to begin to work his work through you I'm not just talking to him Come on, the enemy has done it. Ah, come on. The enemy's done everything he can to blind you to what God wants in your life. And you have stuck your feet in the mud. You stand anchored to this earth and its issues. It's time to let go of it. It's time to get into the spirit and let the spirit begin to speak realities. Let the spirit begin to speak the future. Come on, let go of yesterday. My God, let it go and grasp a hold of the spirit. I just heard it, Pastor. That's impossible. In the flesh, yes. 
And in the past, it's been improbable. That means we don't. But it's a new day. I said, it's a new day. It's a n- ah, God has turned the page. It's time for the church to become the church. It's time for you to become apostolic. It's time for you to let go of yesterday's norm and grab a hold of a brand new set of perimeters to live your life in. God said it. God's going to empower it. It doesn't matter what the rest of the world said. It doesn't matter what yesterday said. It doesn't matter what your character says. It doesn't matter what your abilities say. What does the word of God say? Who will believe the report of the Lord? I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this house right now. You accept what God said about your life. There are many voices in this world, and none without signification, including your own. But you shut out those voices, and you begin to listen for the still, small voice of Almighty God. God during that time of prayer you let God begin to speak things that are not as though they were you let God begin to elevate you and anoint your prayer life let God begin to anoint your give you an anointing to walk in it's time to let go of yesterday it's time to let go of yesterday's practices it's time to let go of yesterday's uh, beliefs it's time to let go of yesterday's doubts it's time to let go of yesterday's fears it's time to let go of yesterday's pains it's time to let go of yesterday's passions it's time to let go of yesterday's uh, yesterday's pleasures it's time now to get a hold of the passion of God it's time now to get a hold of the power of God it's time now to be consumed with the presence and the purpose of the almighty This is the new norm. The new norm is for you to get up and speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost prays through you every day. The new norm is for you to take authority over your mind that has plagued you. The new norm is for you to gird up the loins of your mind in the perimeters of thus saith the word of God and the blood of the Lamb that has cleansed you and the anointing of God that will produce fruit through you. Come on, yesterday's gone. We will not be held Captive to yesterday's failures, yesterday's fears, or yesterday's traditions. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new anointing. It's a new dimension. But you and I got to step up to it. It's not an impartation. It's a transformation that's going to happen through you and I praying in the Spirit every day. I don't come to church to talk in tongues. I don't talk, come to church to pray in the Spirit. I wake up to do that. I don't come to church to see a miracle. I look for it everywhere I go. I don't come to church to feel the presence of God. He lives within me. And I'm stirring him up everywhere I go because I want to be led by the Spirit. This is the new norm. This is who you are. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. I don't care who you were. I don't care what's happened in the past. Neither does God. The blood covers that. Put it under the blood and pray in the Spirit until you are conformed into his image. Come on, some of you are going to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover while you, you're astonished as they are. But you've prayed in the Spirit, and you've been praying in the Spirit, and something happened on the inside of you. Brother Duhon, I wonder if Peter scared himself whenever the man said, alms, alms, and something. You know, Peter was always one to open his mouth before he thought. Brother Kenny, I just wonder if Peter and John wasn't talking about something and he was all worked up in the Holy Ghost and this guy said, alms, alms, and something welled up on the inside of Peter. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Now that was the chicken liver apostle, disciple. 
But something happened on the inside of that boy, Brother Lashley. Something happened on the inside of that man. What was it? It was the spirit of the living God that just began to work on the inside of him. And for him to open his mouth was to let faith go. Well, Pastor, I, I'm not th- bent that way. You think Peter was? I feel, oh, come on, would you just lift your hands right now? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Come on, lift your hands and receive it. I, I'm not a prophet, but I am a pastor, and I feel the Spirit of God on me, giving direction to the church right now. If you want to be a part of this, you receive it. Receive it into your spirit, oh God. Seal this in our hearts. Ah, come on, receive it into your spirit. In the name of Jesus, Uh, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. I don't know how it's going to happen, but that's okay. I know it's going to happen because you said it. I receive it. I accept it, and I'm going to act upon it. Ah, come on. It's time for you to be apostolic. It's time for you to walk in the realm of the Spirit. It's time for you to fellowship the supernatural. It's time for the Holy Ghost to begin to transform us so He can flow through us. Come on, you can pray in the Spirit right now. Come on, you can receive that into your spirit right now. Come on, you can receive that into your spirit right now. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on. You need to say yes, Lord. Be it according to your servant, even as you have spoken it. Be it according to my life, God, even as you declared it. I receive it, God. Come on. You're to be the head, not the tail. Come on. The blessings are to overtake you. Come on, the anointing, you're to live in it constantly. Yes, you're a son, you're a daughter of God. It is up to you. Come on, this world is looking to you to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. The world is looking at you to be that apostle in your area, in that apostle in your realm of influence. Yes, God. Yes, God. I accept it. I accept the responsibility. Flow through us, oh God. Come on, that's it. Receive it into your spirit. Come on, that's it. Come on. Come on. Ah, Come on, it's time to be apostolic. It's time to operate in the gifts. It's time to receive the anointing. It's time to receive the responsibility. It's time to commit yourself. It's time to walk in dimension of power and authority. Come on, I'm telling you, you can do this. I said, you can do this. You can do this. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in you. The spirit of almighty God resides on the inside of you. You can do this. 
In the name of Jesus, I come against that lying spirit that would harass your mind, that would torment your faith. In Jesus' name, be still. In Jesus' name, be quiet. Holy Ghost, begin to speak. Holy Ghost, rise up. Faith, faith, faith begin to rise. Huh? Hmm. Ah, uh, come on. You'll still be bearing fruit in your old age. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the enemy said, uh, that's past. Uh, it, it, the enemy already told you that uh, your time's over. Uh -uh. No, oh, 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 God, no. You're still going to be bearing fruit in your old age. Come on. Where is the spirit of Caleb? Forty years ago, God gave me a promise. And I had faith. <laughs> ha. He said, was he 90 years old? 80 years old? My strength has not abated. It's as strong right now as it was 40 years ago. What a ha! I'm talking to somebody in the Holy Ghost. You've been walk, talk, walking with God for a long time. You feel like your physical strength may have abated, but there is a dimension of prayer and power on the inside of you. It's not abated. The enemy's just put a lid on it. It's time for you to turn up the heat. It's time for you to go rise up on the wings of the eagle. It's time for you to get lost in apostolic prayer and let God. God elevates you and let God begin to use you. I love how he said, my strength has not abated. I'm as strong today as I was when I went to spy out the land. I have strength to go out. I'll fight it, pastor. I'll give it a good old college try. I'll do my best. Caleb said, I've got the strength to go out to battle, and I've got the strength. I'll be back when I'm done. I will bring victory back with me. He said, I don't just have the strength to fight, but I've got the strength to win. <laughs> Brother, Brother Heinrich, you know, you know who he, 80 years old, you know who he defeated? Oh, we dare not go up. There's giants in the land. He said, hey, that mountain I asked for, the Anakins live in that mountain. That's where the Anakins live, the giants. He said, give me my mountain. And the Bible said he drove out the Anakins out of the mountains. He drove them all the way to Philistia. He drove out Goliath's ancestors before he could ever raise his voice against the children of God. Come on, there's somebody in the house today. The enemy's tried to tell you it's too late, it's too long past. I defy that in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the living God, the eternal spirit of God is on the inside of you. The immortal spirit of the Holy Ghost resides within you. Go ahead and rise up and chase that giant out of your life. God's given you that ministry. God's given you that victory. God's given you that area. Who dare he defy you? You just get in the spirit. Not by might. Nor by power. But by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Brother, Brother Lashley, I think that says the Lord of hosts. Am I right? That's the Lord of the armies. You're not by yourself. Don't let the enemy tell you by yourself no more. Don't let the enemy isolate you. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. If nothing else, the armies of the Lord encamp round about you. You can't do it on your own anyway. Joshua saw this magnificent warrior. He said, are you for us or for them? Neither. 
I'm the captain of the Lord's host. What he was saying, Brother Kenny, was, I'm not with you. You're with me. If you want to be. You chickened out the first time. The Lord gave me Canaan. Now you can come with because I'm going to fight against these jokers. I'm not for you. I'm not against you. But you can be with me. God is not for you. When I say that, I mean for your personal vendettas, endeavors, desires. Now, he has a divine purpose for your life. And he's for that purpose. And if you will get in the purpose with God, he will fight your battles for you. He will empower you to overcome. Now, I, got, I got to shut up. I got to, I've, got to, I've got to bring this to a close. The Spirit of the Lord went with him. With Sean. He said, I've given you the land. Now go fight and possess it. How, many, how long did I preach on Amalek? Go and dispossess the enemy. I'm for you. I'm with you. Be courageous. Fear not. With the Jeremy, God, God's got a purpose. God's got a divine purpose for you, for your family, for your future. But it's not just going to be given to me. It's not just going to be handed to you. And that's our problem. Praise the Lord, Sister Kathy. How you doing? It's not going to be handed to you. You got to possess it. I was going to take your car keys, but I don't want to pass my germs on to you. But I see you got some extra help there. Pepper spray. <laughs> If I have something that's yours, well, that is a good analogy. If I took your keys, I promise you, you can't get them without the pepper spray. You may be a great gal. You may be a little tough, but I ain't got to take you. <laughs> but that little black canister you got there, <laughs> it's more than an equalizer. Have your keys. Listen, without God, your possession is impossible. Without that help, it's not just going to, I ain't just giving you your keys just because you're pretty. Not just because you're a woman. Not just because it's wrong. Not just, no. I ain't going to do it. And the enemy isn't going to give you your possession just because you're God's kid, just because you call yourself a Christian, just because you go to church. We're going to need some help. That help comes from that getting in the spirit every day. That help is that anointing that comes upon you in the morning and you walk out of the house, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what's coming my way, but I know I'm walking in the anointing of God and he's going to lead me and he's going to guide me and as long as I'm in his hands, there is nothing that can stand against me. He said, you go ahead. Brother Kenny, I read in one place, he drove, he, he drove out the enemies with hornets. Israel showed up, they had to put themselves out there. When they got there, the enemy was fleeing because of hornets. Now, there was other times they had to fight. God's not going to give it to you, Brother Taylor. He's not just going to say, here, let me come to you. Here it is. He's not going to do that. We want that, don't we, Sister Taylor? We, we, feed me. I'm full. Oh, wow. Popeye spinach. Wow, did you see that? I just got anointed. Where's that devil? You better watch out, seven sons of Siva. However, if you'll find a place of prayer each and every day, 
line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, God will begin to build you up. Now look, I'll forget it. I don't have time to preach that message. That's another one. Let me tell you, God's got Canaan waiting on us. God didn't get Israel out of Egypt to leave them in the wilderness of Sinai. There's a, there, you got to spend some time there. you got to get the law in your heart. But the law does no good in my heart if it's not exemplified through my actions and through my life. And because they got the law in their heart, uh, the law of God was written in their heart, they can look at Canaan and not worry about Jericho, not worry about Og, not worry about Bashan, not worry about the other kings. Five kings came out before them, and the Bible said they fled into a cave. Joshua just rolled rocks up on it because he was too busy chasing the rest of the warriors. I am so excited. I am so messed up on the inside, Brother Duhon, but I've never been more excited about what God's doing in the church in all my life. So I'm just trying to encourage you. God's not just going to give you the victory. You're going to win the victory. But if you'll fight, God will fight with you. You know how you fight? In prayer. Get in the Word and then go to prayer each day. Every day, every time you get an opportunity. Don't just do it once a day. If you get the opportunity, you're driving down the road, you ain't got nothing else to do, just get lost in the spirit. Turn, turn the stupid news off. That just makes me mad. This world's in chaos. I turn that off and just get lost in the spirit of God. I just get lost in singing and worship. And the next thing I know, I'm driving down the road talking in tongues again. What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing them. My, my father-in-law's got the, Brother Harry, you remember them spring exercises the guy's head? Brother Harry? My father-in-law's got them all over the place. When he sits down, he just reaches over and grabs them. What is, what is that? He's just exercising his hands a little bit, getting a little bit more strength, you're getting some dexterity. When you're driving down the road and talking in tongues, you're just getting a little more dexterity. You're just getting a little bit more strength. You're just exercising. Oh, Pastor, that is just apostolic. Brother Ray, can I tell him what I told you about apostolic power in our services lately? And I don't mean this to be negative or to upbraid. But Brother Duhon, before tonight, we ain't had enough Holy Ghost power in our services to blow, blow the fuzz off a peach. We broke through something tonight. Y'all pray for tomorrow. I take that back. We did not break through this tonight. You have broken through it every day that you spent in apostolic prayer. You have broken through it every day that you found yourself in the spirit praying in tongues. You have broken through this. As a church body, we have broken through this together every day. And so when we got here tonight, hell couldn't stand against us because we've shattered his strongholds all week long. Stand with me, please. I got to shut up. Supreme Court says this is. We don't need that. You are amazing. I love you to death. And I thank you that you're so willing to do this. But we need to learn to get there without you. You don't know how close I am to come and say no music in church, folks. Would you stay home? Would you get lost in the spirit? <laughs> the whole music staff's going, please do it. We have got to get back to our apostolic roots. And they weren't, they weren't anchored in music. They were anchored in fellowship with Almighty God. And I feel that here tonight. This flow is, is like, well, it's like Saturday night. It's hard to shut off. Pray for tomorrow. 
I'm telling you, by 2 o'clock, I, I feel sorry for those people. I feel like they're getting what's left of me. <laughs> and they're going to be sorry that some of them said, you know what, Sunday, is, that's a better service. They're going to be sorry tomorrow. <laughs> Unless the Holy Ghost helps me, I don't know how I'm going to do this. <sighs> well, he helped me tonight, so. At any rate, this is the new norm. I, I, it's kind of cool. It, it gives us a clean slate. We can have church how God wants us to have church from now on, and we can blame it on the government. They won't let us have church the old way. Fooey, we're going to have to have it God's way. So here's the deal. Be fluid with me, okay? If it happens, it happens. I don't want it to happen. But I was talking to Brother Winters before I came to service today. Uh, by the way, he's going to be with us the 23rd of September through the 27th. Uh, he's probably going to speak to us on a video on the 23rd, which is a Wednesday night. But he'll be with us Saturday and Sunday on the 27th of September. Brother, if the government will let us stay open, Brother, help me, Randall. Right? Yeah, Brother Randall will be with us in August. I don't have revival in July. It's just no use. Everybody's on vacation. Nobody wants revival. So, no, we're coming back together June and July. We're coming back together so we can explode when revival gets there. But this is who we are. This is what we are, okay? Which is a good thing. You remember years ago we quit having church at a.m. and p.m. and started 2 o'clock service? Everybody asked me why I did it. I asked me why I did it. My mom threatened to go to the Second Baptist Church because of it. <laughs> and when I went to Monday night, she really threw a fit. If we hadn't, bro, Brother Taylor, if we hadn't gone to 2 o'clock service, God was preparing us to be able to take over the Pekin Church. There's no way we could have done that. And he got us used to what he got so sweet. He just got us so used to that. And then he just said, okay, you used to go Sunday morning, Sunday night. You're just going to Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Go ahead. Gripe about that. Over eight years ago, we started having prayer on Saturday nights. Can you believe it's been that long? I didn't know how long it had been. I asked Brother Charlie. If he knew, he said, yeah, he said, I know it's been going at least eight years. He said, because it was a Saturday night prayer meeting eight years ago. God changed my life. Could it be, Brother Taylor, that God had to start prayer meeting on Saturday night eight years ago so we'd get used to having church on Saturday night? Everybody knows you've got to have church on Sunday. The Sabbath was on Saturday, folks. Before the Lord resurrected, church was always on Saturday. I was talking about the last year before service. As the church begins to grow, I didn't say if, as the church begins to grow, we can only have 100 people in church a service. That's Supreme Court. Will you be flexible with me? We've got to figure out how to have a move of God, how to facilitate this move of God in these last days. And it's not going to come in our traditional mindsets. At first, we may have to cancel service in Pekin and have all three services in Peoria because there's no way I can host 100 people in Pekin Church. Okay? I don't want to do that. And it's temporary. But at some point, we, in order for us to get to 400, we're going to have to have church four times a week, uh, four times in the weekend. Sister Rachel said, oh, no, you did not. I was praying today, Brother Lashley. And God spoke to my heart. He said, are you willing to preach Saturday morning, Sunday night, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon? I said, God, I'll preach 10 times a week if you'll give me strength. 
I'll do whatever I've got to do to facilitate this end time revival. Look, brothers and sisters, this isn't what we're about. We're about going home and, and, and securing the kingdom and growing the kingdom of God. And if the government says we can only have 100 people per service, that's over three times what the average Pentecostal church has. I'll have 100 people. Saturday night, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and Sunday afternoon. And my God, we, wouldn't it be amazing if we could open up a Hispanic service on Sunday night? Now, that's my heart. That's my desire. Yeah. Pastor, you're, you, you're way out there. You ain't hurt. You, that ain't a drop in a bucket. I would scare you out those doors if I really began to talk to you. But I'm just telling you what God's putting in my heart. I pray, Brother Duhon, we never get to go back to a single service. Look, if by the time they let us go back, we have 400 people, there ain't no way we're having church in this building. Can you see how God's getting ready, the church ready for a thousand soul church? You see all these empty pews? Guests can come and find places on these empty pews. When we were all together, Elder, we couldn't put 20 people. We couldn't put 20 guests in this auditorium when we were all together. There's no place for them to sit. I can find a place for them to sit today. You see how God's doing this, setting us up? So let go. No more. Don't you let me hear you say, I can't wait till it gets back to normal. We are not going back. Back to normal. God, blow our mind. Father, direct us. We will follow. Lead us, God. We will follow. I pray that you seal this word in your congregation's heart. These are your people. These are my brothers and sisters. God, I've, I've done my best to follow you tonight. And I pray, God, that you would seal this word in our heart. Every last one of us, let us go home with excitement, with the expectation, and with faith. And, God, a determination for you to begin to do the miraculous in our life as we commit ourselves to pray in the Spirit often as we possibly can. Commit ourselves, God, to, draw, to try to give a, an honest effort before you to get in the spirit every single day of our life as you conform us into your image as you begin to multiply your power and your anointing upon your church so that we can turn this world upside down for you before you come back God you have many souls in this city and it's your desire to reach them and you're going to do it through us so help us get ready create in me a clean heart oh God renew within me a right spirit and then God lead me and Use me, anoint me, God, to do your will. And I will be careful to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. 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 I love you with all my heart, and I can't wait to see what God's going to do in your life. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.